In this video using Apple Motion, we're gonna build this audio message animation that I used for a recent video exploring Poland. Also, if you're a member on Patreon, you can download this project file and use it in your videos right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. From the project browser, go ahead and set your preset frame rate and duration to whatever you want it to be for your video in Final Cut Pro. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and just select the motion project today and push open. The first thing I want is a background, so let's go ahead and add that in. We'll go on over to generators, then locate the color solid, and drag that over into the main group that's already there. I'll go ahead and rename this color solid to be background. From there, I'm gonna change the color of that to be a nice white color, and I might even darken it just a little bit so it's kind of an off white. I also want it to have texture almost like it's paper, so let's go on up to filters, go down to stylize, and select add noise. Going over to the left side, let's change the type over to pink noise and change it to monochrome so it doesn't introduce any new colors. And then we can also disable auto animate. So now this texture is going to be locked in place over the duration of our video. From there, we can bring down the mix to a place where we're happy and that's looking pretty good to me. Now that we have our background, it's time to build out the message. So go on down to your rectangle tool and create a rectangle roughly in the size of the message that you want. From there, I'm gonna go on over to my properties, find the position parameter, right click on it and reset that parameter. So now this rectangle will be directly in the center. Let's go on over into the shape settings and first change the color so we can see it a little bit better against this light background. I like that dark mode look so we'll go with something like that. Let's go on over to geometry and round out the corners by dragging up the roundness slider. Now you'll notice that a lot of message bubbles have a nice little tail to it so let's go ahead and add that on. Going down to our bezier tool, we can select that and we can zoom in with command plus. I'll push and hold space and click and drag to move around in the viewer and let's go ahead and create three points. One on this far left edge, one down here to simulate that tail and then one up here on the bottom edge. And we can actually click and drag to round that out if we wanted to. From there, we can go ahead and connect these two points and we should be good to go. Now that we've created the tail, you'll notice that they're completely different colors from the message bubble and we want them to look exactly the same. So to fix this, let's go on over to the fill color. Now we could use the eyedropper to get the same color from that rectangle, but if I were to publish this over to Final Cut Pro, I want the ability to just change the color on the fly without needing to change the color for two objects. So let's go ahead and link the colors. Finding the colors, let's click on this down arrow, go down to add parameter behavior and select link. From there, I'll drag in this rectangle and now this bezier shape knows to lock to the same color as that rectangle, which is super nice because at any time we could change the color and both will change at the same time. I'm not totally happy with the shape of the tail, so let's go ahead and select our bezier shape. We can double click on it and I can push command and click and drag and that will allow me to kind of round out this shape as I need it. I want a bit more of a curve here at the top and less of a curve here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and just adjust these bezier points till we're happy. And then I'll also push command and click on this final point and that should adjust things in a nice way. If we push Shift Z, we can see how this message bubble is looking, and that's looking pretty nice to me. Now that we've created those two shapes, let's go ahead and put them into a singular group. So I'll select them both, right click, and select group. I'm gonna name this group message bubble. And from there, we can start to add in the other shapes that would be found inside of the message bubble. First, we need to add a play button. So let's zoom in once again with command plus. Pushing and holding space, we can click and drag to move around in the window and find our Bezier tool. We're just gonna build a basic rectangle roughly the size that we want. I'm gonna hold shift so that this first edge is completely straight. Then I'm gonna let go of shift and click to create that third point and then close it off. Now I want this to have rounded edges. So let's go on over into the geometry settings and locate the roundness slider. I'll just click and drag that up. And so now we have this rounded play button, just like what's found in a lot of messaging apps. If you're not happy with the shape, you could go ahead and expand it out just a little bit using the different control points, maybe make it a little bit bigger. It's really up to you how you want this to look, of course. And I'm liking how that is turning out. So now we have our play button, but we also want to replicate those waveforms that you see in a lot of messaging apps. So to do that, let's go ahead and select our Bezier tool. We'll click to create a singular point, hold shift, and then create a secondary point. From there, I'll push enter, 
And then we can go on over to the left side and disable the fill. So now we just have this singular outline. We can go ahead and expand the width to a place where we're happy and that's looking pretty nice. Then from there, I wanna replicate this point over a whole bunch of times. I don't wanna duplicate it manually. I just want motion to do the heavy lifting. So let's use a replicator. With that Bezier shape selected, let's go to the top right corner and select replicate. You'll see that it's created a whole bunch of different control points and we want them to be on just a straight line. So going on over to the left side, find the shape parameter and change it from rectangle over to line. Now we can go ahead and adjust these control points to a position where we're happy. We can stretch them out over the length of the message, maybe give us a little bit more space there on the left side and that's looking pretty nice. From there, let's go ahead and give it a lot more points. So we can drag up the point slider to give us even more frequencies happening here inside of our waveform. Finally, let's go on down to the bottom and find the scale randomness slider. We want it to look like audio waveforms that have been talking. So let's just find this Y parameter, which is going to adjust the scale vertically and just drag that up under scale randomness. And just like that, we've created a little mini audio waveform. Now, if you're not really happy with the shape of the waveform, you can come down to the random seed at the bottom and click on this icon. And if we cycle through, we can get a whole bunch of different looks for this audio waveform that are all completely random. I generally try to find one that just matches up with whatever voice I've brought inside of Apple Motion. So that's all well and good, but I wanna animate all of these coming in in a very nice way. So let's go ahead and do that. Taking our replicator, let's click and drag that inside of our message bubble so that it actually animates as we scale everything up. And selecting the message bubble group, let's go on down to the arrow tool and change it over to the anchor point tool. From there, I'm gonna click and drag that anchor point to be down in the bottom left-hand corner. That is so that when we scale up this object, all of the scaling is done from that point. So what I mean by that is going over to properties, I can drag down the scale and you'll see that everything is shrinking down to that singular point. Now, I don't want to shrink it both vertically and horizontally. I only want this to be a horizontal scaling. So going on over to the left side, we'll find our scale parameter and expand that out. And here you should see the X parameter. And if we drag that to zero, you'll see how everything is squishing in really nicely. Let's go ahead and go to the right side. We'll click on this down arrow and add a parameter behavior and that parameter behavior is gonna be overshoot. We're gonna use this because if I don't have to, I don't really like to manually animate inside of Apple Motion. There's so many powerful parameter behaviors that can do all the heavy lifting for me. So I want this to pop in relatively quickly. Let's go ahead and move forward about half a second or so. For me, that'll be about 29, 30 frames. And selecting that overshoot parameter, will push O. So that's gonna trim that down to be really short and fast. After that, let's find the start value. Right now it's set to 0%, which means there's going to be a 0% change. So let's make it so that there is a 100% change by setting this to negative 100%. So now this is going to animate coming from zero and then pop out just like so. I'm not totally happy with the animation. I want it to be a little bit more fluid, almost like an Apple animation. So let's come on down to the cycles and change that over to one. Additionally, I wanna drag the acceleration up quite a bit. So if we push play, now it's going to give us a much smoother animation. Additionally, I want to animate this replicator coming into play so it almost looks like the waveforms are being generated on the fly. So selecting that replicator, let's go up to behaviors and find the replicator category, then select sequence replicator. Going to the left side, we can add a new parameter. And the parameter that we wanna adjust is the scale. So we wanna squish it down vertically. To do that, we'll find the scale parameter. And now you can see we have a scale parameter here which we can expand out and this time we want to scale down on the Y axis so this is all vertical if I drag that to zero you can see that starting to make an adjustment here on the right side so I'm just gonna drag that down to zero. Unfortunately, as it is, it's currently set to sequencing for a two setting. So if I play forward, you'll see that everything is shrinking down to oblivion. We actually want them to be popping in. That's a super easy fix though. All we need to do is change the sequencing from two over to from. So now it's starting from 0% and slowly scaling into 100%, which is really cool. However, I don't want these to be popping in as everything else is popping in. I want them to pop in after the fact. So selecting our replicator, let's move forward just a little bit to the peak of the animation somewhere in there, and we'll push 
eye. That's gonna set the end point, which is the start of the animation. Additionally, I don't want this sequence replicator to be super slow because as it is, it's taking the entire duration of the project. So let's go ahead and go into about the one second mark and push O. So that will speed things up drastically. If we push play now, you can see how they're popping in. But it's not very fluid. It's kind of a constant motion and we want it to have some easing applied. So we can do that by coming down to the traversal mode, which is currently set to constant. So that's going to be a linear animation. There's no kind of curve to it. What we can do is change that from constant over to ease in, ease out. So if we push play, the animation is going to slow down at the end, which looks really, really nice. Finally, I wanna animate our play button. I'm gonna go ahead and rename that to be play button. And from there, we'll find the scaling parameter. Let's go ahead and find the point where we want the play button to appear, maybe somewhere in here and push I. From there in the scaling parameter, we'll click to add a parameter behavior. And let's just add in that overshoot parameter. Again, we want it to start from zero. So let's set that to a negative 100% value to negate that 100% value it was at originally. And we'll see that the animation is really, really slow. So let's just speed that up. We'll move forward a few frames or so, making sure that overshoot parameter is selected and we'll push O. So now it's going to bounce in really nicely. But again, I want it to be a little bit more fluid. So let's change the cycles from three down to one. So it only has one bounce, which looks really nice. And that's looking great. So we've animated all of that into place, but now I want the color of our waveform to slowly change over time as if a message is being played out. So to do that, let's find our replicator. I'm gonna go up to filters, go to stylize, and then select fill. The fill effect gives us the ability to change the colors of all of the replicator as we want. And what we can do is change this over to a gradient. Now the gradient looks pretty nice in and of itself, but I wanna animate this gradient slowly coming across the face. So let's go ahead and set the two gradient points on the left and right side. So it's giving us a nice straight line across the waveform. From there, we'll go into the gradient settings and locate the colors. On the right side, I want this to be a white color as if the message is unread. And on the left side, I want it to be a nice blue color as if the message has been read through. But now we have this nice soft line throughout it and I want it to be sharp. So to do that, let's select this first color and change the interpolation type from continuous over to constant. What that has done is it's given us this nice sharp line for our message, which is really handy. But what's really cool is we can also use the location parameter here to adjust it. So if I drag that down to zero, we can find the beginning of where we want the message to start playing, click to add a keyframe, move forward as long as the duration of the message is, and drag that up to a full 100% and that's just gonna slowly animate across. Next, I want this play button to animate over to a pause button. So to do that, let's go ahead and just select our text tool. We'll click where the play button is and just put two eyes. And they're hard to see because the text is white, but if I scale them up, you can see them there. Two eyes side by side. We'll scale it about the same size, and then we'll just find the place where the message starts to play out, somewhere in here. We'll go to our properties and set the opacity down to zero. And we're just gonna do a really basic fade. We'll click to add a keyframe, move forward a little bit, and then drag that up to a full 100%. Next, we'll select our play button. We'll go to where the pause button is starting to fade and we can click to add a keyframe and then drag that to zero. So now they fade into each other. So now we have the message popping in, it plays and everything is looking great. But the last detail I wanna add to this message is an icon so you can place whoever you want to be talking for your video. What I'm gonna do is select the main group and push Command I and I'll just locate my profile picture. From there we'll push import and now I can go ahead and select my circle tool. We'll find the top left corner, click and drag holding shift and we'll just drag that to the bottom right corner so it's roughly the same shape. After that I can just drag the circle directly on top of my head headshot and just like that we've created this nice circle mask. From there I'll take my headshot and we can go ahead and select the transform tool. I'll hold shift and click and drag in the corner to scale that down 
roughly to the size that I want it. Finally, we can go on over to the properties and find the scale parameters. I want this to pop into place. So let's click and add a parameter behavior, select the overshoot parameter once again. And this time we actually scaled the headshot down to 19%. So let's find that overshoot parameter and just set this to negative 19%, because again, we're offsetting that scale. It's gonna be a very slow animation, so let's find where we want it to start, somewhere in here, and I'll push I, and then we'll find the end of where we want the animation, maybe back a little bit, and we'll push O to trim that down. So now it pops into place just like so. Then let's change the cycles down to one, and we could bring the acceleration up quite a bit. So now it's popping into place just like so. Maybe that's a little too fast, so I'll expand it out. Another detail I added to this animation was my head moving as the message was being spoken. So to do that, we can go ahead and push Command I to import, and we'll just locate the audio file that I worked with. You'll notice this audio message is now inside of Apple Motion. And what I can do is select my headshot. We'll go to Properties, find the scale parameter, click to add a parameter behavior, and we'll select Audio. From there, we can select our audio message export, which is the main source that will synchronize it. And so now it's going to move as the audio is being driven inside of motion. What I can do now is set the scale to be something really tiny, like 0.1, because we don't want it to be moving as much as it is. Even that's a little bit much. Let's try 0.05 and that's looking pretty good. So now as this message is playing, my head is going to be moving in the same way, which is a great way to represent somebody talking. And finally, the last bit of animation I had inside of my main video was I had the camera fly through the message. So you'll notice that I've placed everything inside of a singular group, which contains all of the other groups. I'll just rename this to be main group, which is very important for this next effect. So first, let's go ahead and select add object and add a 3D camera. We'll switch everything over to 3D. So now I can go ahead and animate this camera however I like in 3D space, including zooming in onto our message. Let me just find the point of where I want the camera to start flying through. And this is looking pretty good. We'll go to the position on our camera, click to add a keyframe, and then move forward however long we want the animation to take place. From there, we'll find the Z axis and just click and drag that until the camera is all the way up to our audio message. And I'm actually going to offset it by using the X and Y values. So now our camera should zoom all the way in to that point, which is looking really great. But we want this to fade out to allow another video to appear in the background. So to do that, we're gonna jump inside of our main group and find our replicator. Go ahead and right click and select group. Then from there, we're gonna push K to create a clone of that group. The reason I'm doing this is if I created the clone off the replicator, sometimes that can randomly offset it. So by first throwing it into a group, that seems to adjust for that. And so we have our clone layer here now, and this clone layer is actually going to drive an alpha channel. So I'm gonna rename this clone layer to be the alpha masker. Then selecting the main group, which contains all of the layers, we're gonna right click and select add image mask. From there, we can click and drag our alpha masker into this layer. So as it is, this alpha masker is only cutting out this part of the video and we wanna flip that. So let's go ahead and change the mask blend mode from add over to subtract. But we don't want it to subtract over the entire duration of the video. We only want it to be as the camera is flying through it. So let's find the moment where the camera starts to fly through. And because we've set the source channel to alpha, that means that if we take our alpha masker, go to the properties and drop the opacity, that cutout is gonna go away. So we'll set the opacity to zero, click to add a keyframe, move forward to the camera flying through and drag that up to a full 100%. So now the camera is going to fly through and this is actually going to provide us with an alpha channel. So if I push shift T, we can see the alpha channel appearing with all of these checkerboard dots, which means if we were to go up to share, export movie, go to settings, change it to Apple ProRes 4444 and the color channels to color plus alpha, this project would have an alpha channel, which means we can drop it on top of another video file inside of Final Cut Pro to provide us with a really nice transition. Once again, if you're a patron, you can actually download a project file that contains all of this and you'll be able to use it inside of your videos. It's gonna be fully customizable so you can change all the colors and there's a drop zone for the icon talking on the left-hand side, although that's not going to be properly animated to your audio because Apple Motion 
doesn't do audio that way and it's kind of annoying and something that I hope comes to Apple Motion someday. Anyway, if this video is helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you might want to check out this video where I show you how to build a Rings of Power map animation using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.